if the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike. This is preeminently the time to speak the truth, the whole truth, frankly and boldly. History doesn't have to be boring, buttoned up, or inaccessible. And it certainly didn't end in 1945. It belongs to all of us, and we share and add to it every day. Welcome to the History of Go-Go podcast, where I interview interesting guests, cover a motley crew of topics, and it's a place where you can sit, think, and drink all at the same time. I'm your host, Rob Mellon. So... Live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart. Trouble no one for their religion. Respect others in their view. And demand that they respect yours too. Love your life. Perfect your life. Beautify all things in your life. Seek to make your life long and its purpose in the service of your people. Prepare a noble death song for the day when you pass over the great divide. My guest today is the international award-winning author or editor of 17 books on the American Civil War and the American West, Dr. Peter Cousins. He retired after a 30-year career as a Foreign Service Officer for the U.S. Department of State. Prior to joining the Foreign Service, he served as a captain in the United States Army. His book, The Earth is Weeping, the epic story of the Indian Wars for the American West, received the 2017 Gilder Learman Prize in Military History, and the Caroline Bancroft Prize in Western History. The Earth is Weeping was chosen by Smithsonian Magazine as one of the top 10 history books of 2016. All of Cousins' books have been selections of the Book of the Month Club, History Book Club, and or the Military Book Club. He was a frequent contributor to the New York Times Disunion series and has written for America's Civil War, Civil War Times Illustrated, MHQ, Cowboys and Indians, BBC World Histories, The Wall Street Journal, and Smithsonian, among other publications. He has served as a juror for the prestigious Lincoln Prize and is a member of the advisory board of the Buffalo Bills Center of the American West. His most recent work is Tecumseh and the Prophet, the Shawnee Brothers Who Defied a Nation. Cousins brings us to the forefront of the chaos and violence that characterized the young American Republic when settlers spilled across the Appalachians to bloody effect in their haste to exploit lands won from the British in the War of Independence. And we are very pleased to have the decorated author with us today. Welcome, Dr. Cousins. Now, I know you told me not to call you doctor, but I spent a lot of time in the military, so I just like stand on protocol, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I think in our conversations, I told you that we had a local connection to this story. We found a sword in the wall, and we traced that back, and we found out that the sword that was discovered inside of a wall in Hannibal, Missouri, when they were tearing down a building, belonged to William Ruddle or William Riddell. When we researched the family, we discovered that William's grandfather, Stephen, had been captured by the Shawnee as a boy and was raised in the tribe as a brother to Tecumseh and Tenskwatawa, which, of course, takes us straight into your research and this story.
Peter, it is tradition here to accompany the discussion with a special brew. Today, we have Tippecanoe Common Ale from the Lafayette Brewing Company of Lafayette, Indiana. This is a unique red ale that features pale and crystal malts with a generous helping of Amarillo hops. The end result is a beautiful red amber ale that is one of the favorites at the Lafayette Brewing Company. Remember, the best way to enjoy an episode is with one of our featured brews. I would also like to ask you to subscribe to the podcast. Simply hit the subscribe button on the podcast directory that you use and get new material right away, right when it's published. Subscribing, it is the only way to get those new shows right away. And to the ever-expanding list of supporters and listeners from 60 countries, hundreds of cities across the United States, I have to say thank you. And now, I raise my Tippecanoe common ale very high. And to the Shawnee brothers that stood boldly for their way of life, I have to say cheers. So in regards to the origins of the Shawnee, what are some aspects of their culture and what was the nature of their early history? The American Revolution had a direct impact on the Shawnee. Was Tecumseh present for George Rogers Clark attack on the tribe in 1780? And if so, how did that encounter affect Tecumseh and the Shawnee in general? So Tecumseh is at the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794. 
Would you provide an overview of the battle, who was involved, and what were some of the key aspects of the treaty at the conclusion of the conflict? These treaties are convoluted and confusing, and in most cases, to put it bluntly, the Americans just take advantage of the Indians and never intend on living up to the promises in the treaties. So if you take that battle and some of the corresponding treaties that you have mentioned, where the Indians were taken advantage of, the tribes were scattered, their confidence must have been shattered. So I'd like to paint a picture for the rise of Tenskwatawa, the other part of your book, The Prophet. And I'm picturing Tenskwatawa sitting, staring into a fire to the point of a coma, an actual coma, thinking maybe about his personal failures or the loss of dignity, not being the man maybe that he hoped he would be, and how that coincided with the failures and loss of dignity of the Shawnee in general, the alcoholism, the disease, depopulation. It seems like the Shawnee people at that point are more than ready for a transcendent message like Tinkswatawa.
it's pretty amazing. And of course, Tenskwatawa provides that spiritual spark. But what does the great leader Tecumseh do with the message? Because that's an, an important part of the spread of those beliefs. How successful is he at coalescing so many decentralized groups? I mean, it seems hard to convince a single clan, let alone a division or even harder, a tribe or someone, as you mentioned, completely outside of your area, maybe in Minnesota. So Thomas Jefferson has a vision, too. I don't think he stared into a fire and came out on the other side, but his vision of America was one of an empire of liberty, spreading democracy, massive continental agrarian society. Indiana literally means land of Indians, so this is an immediate problem for Jefferson's vision. You can't really have this massive agrarian democratic society spreading across the continent of small farms without Indiana and Illinois becoming states. So it seems like there's a collision of those two visions. That actually leads me to my next question, because America's vision for the future, as you had just laid out, and the practical politics of the day bring William Henry Harrison into conflict specifically with the Shawnee brothers. These competing visions that can't coexist leads to the Battle of Tippecanoe. 
The battle is often referred to as a great American victory, but that's just not true. It's more of a draw, if anything. So why do the school textbooks get this battle so wrong? The thing about it is, though, Tenskwatawa had this vision and predictions about the Battle of Tippecanoe, and those do not come to pass. Does that undermine his ability to inspire the Shawnees or his credibility in any way after his visions don't come to pass? So the War of 1812 begins, and Tecumseh, Tenskwatawa, they're 
Indian allies side with the British. The conflict between the tribe and the American settlers had already started, of course. There's an interesting situation that occurs at the Siege of Fort Meigs, one that clearly demonstrates Tecumseh's character, I think. He stops a massacre and even chastises a British commander, saying he was unfit for command because he couldn't stop it. Could you explain what happens at the Siege of Fort Meigs? So speaking of that, and going directly to William Henry Harrison's personal view of Tecumseh as a warrior and a leader, I believe he said he could have forged an empire like the Aztecs or something like that. So could you speak to William Henry Harrison's personal view of Tecumseh?
So Tecumseh is killed at the Battle of the Thames in 1813. What happens in the battle? Are there any military reports that you could rely on when you were doing your research that tells you how Tecumseh actually died and what happened in the battle? And then finally, that loss of Tecumseh, that transformational leader, how did it impact that alliance that he had helped to forge? There was an alternate reality, as if we were in the Marvel universe. I know that's a stretch. (laughs) But in that reality, the British, in effect, would have won the War of 1812, and Tecumseh would not have been killed, and he would have succeeded. If that situation had occurred, could the British, for example, have helped create a new nation, a, I guess, pan-Indian nation of those groups, in, say, Michigan, as a buffer between Canada and America? How far-fetched is that idea?
we talked about the death of Tecumseh in 1813. What happens to Tink's Watawa, though? <laughs> yeah, let's let let's yeah, let him get the, let him read it. It it's more interesting that way anyway. <laughs> Well, I think that's fair. <laughs> so you have researched and written books on both Eastern and Western Indians. The story of the Eastern Indians is often forgotten, even though their power, as you had mentioned before, in the case of the Shawnee brothers, surpassed any of the power that was coalesced out West. Does popular culture, say an emphasis on the Wild West, John Wayne movies and John Ford movies and so forth, does that take a focus away from the Indians in the East? Yeah, does popular culture then rob the Eastern Indians of their place in history in a way? Yeah, there's no question. And not only that, the power of the United States Army. The Army in the late 1700s, early 1800s is almost non-existent. The militias that are out there are very poorly trained, as you mentioned, with some of those Kentuckians, as opposed to after the Civil War, you had experienced soldiers, and they didn't even come close to marshalling the resources that they could have if they needed to. So the status of the Army is completely different as well. Well, thank you very much, Peter. It's an outstanding book on two really fascinating figures, Tecumseh and Tenskwatawa. And many times they're presented completely wrong in our history, and your book corrects that. And of course, if you want to find out the end, you got to get the book and read it. You won't be disappointed. So thanks again. Yeah, I agree. Thank you very much.
I would like to thank my guest today, historian and author, Dr. Peter Cousins. And if you would like to get his book, Tecumseh and the Prophet, The Shawnee Brothers Who Defied a Nation, simply click on the link in the description below. It has been 20 years since a book on the Shawnee leaders has been written, and this one is absolutely excellent. Our featured brew was Tippecanoe Common Ale from the Lafayette Brewing Company of Lafayette, Indiana. If you liked our talk today, please share this episode with a friend. And remember, subscribe to the podcast. All you got to do, hit that subscribe button and get new episodes immediately when they're released. It's the only way to get those new shows right away. For more information on the podcast, like the History of Go Go Facebook page and check out the YouTube channel as well. The music was provided by the outstanding North Carolina band Bones Fork. And if you want to find out what they got going on, just click on the link. It's in the description also. And finally, to the list of listeners and supporters from 60 countries, hundreds of cities across America, I have to say one more time, thank you. There are many more great episodes on the way with discussions on the greedy queen, Queen Victoria, Greek poems and the gods, a memoir of plunder, family property, and Nazi treasure, John C. Calhoun, American heretic, and D-Day girls. So join us again next time when we talk, think, and drink on History of Go-Go.